Hi everyone, uh, today I will show you how to do a one-way ANOVA. Um, as usual, we'll start with an example from biology. So in Europe we have a lot of different species of lizards. Um, and five years ago we, we captured three different species and we captured as many individuals as possible from all of these three species. So we have the wall lizard, that's species number one. We have the vivid parrot lizard, that's species two. And then third, we also tried to capture the snake-eyed lizard. So whenever we captured these lizards, we, we measured the length of the lizard, of the lizard from the snout um, until the tail. And we wanted to know if there was a difference between lengths of these three species. So if one species is longer than the other, um, so let's take a look at the data first. So the name of the data is data one way. So we read the table, it's a text file, we attach it. Um, and then if we click here, we can take a look at the data. So we have, if we scroll down, we see three different groups. These are our three species. And then we see the lengths of the species or of the, I mean, of the different individuals. Um, and the question is whether there's a difference in length between these three species. First of all, assumption number one, if you want to do um, a one-way ANOVA, is that first of all, all samples have to be independent. So, which means that you cannot recapture the same individual. You have to measure different individuals for each species each time. And also you need at least more than two independent categorical groups. In our case, these are the three species. If you only have two species, for example, you would have to do uh, a t-test and not the one-way ANOVA. But more than two groups, in this case, three groups, you can do one-way ANOVA. So what we first have to do is we have to label the groups, the three groups that we have, um, and we have to set them as categorical vectors because we have to make sure that R knows that we're looking at categories and not numbers. So for that, we use this code. Um, in the link below, you'll see, um, you'll find a page where you see the, you, you, you're able to download the file so you don't have to um, type this over. You can just download the file and then you can, then you have the data yourself. So let's run this first. What we say is that we want to set group. So one, two or three as a factor. So for that we use this command. And after that, we can also label these groups. So the first one, the first group is the wall lizard, the second is the viviparous lizard, and the third is a snake-eyed snake -eyed lizard. So let's do that. And we can check if we've done everything correctly. So if you run this, here at the bottom it says uh, factor, which means that group is now considered a factor. This is the first assumption. And the second assumption is that the dependent variable has to be continuous. Um, we measured lengths and lengths are continuous, uh, is a continuous measure. So this assumption has been met. Then the third assumption uh, is that we need normal distributions and these normal distributions, we have to see that within each group individually. And also there can be no major outliers. So that means you cannot just uh, look at your data in general and, and see if you have a normal distribution. You have to look at each group independently. So for that you can subset uh, your groups. So you say group one is uh, the wall lizard, group two is the viviparous lizard, then group three is the snake-eyed lizard, and then if you draw the normal quantile plots, um, ideally what you want to see is that you see a straight line and then there's some spread around this line, uh, but there should be no major outliers, no major fluctuations, no major patterns. So this looks pretty good. So we do this for all of the groups, also for the second group, the second species, which is the viviparous lizard. The normal quantile plot also looks pretty decent. Uh, so no outliers, nothing strange. We look at the third group and again, it looks pretty good. So we can assume that we're looking at normal distributions for each species. This is very important. If this is not the case, you would have to do a different test. Uh, you can only run one-way ANOVA tests if you have these normal distributions for each group. Then a fourth assumption, and this is an assumption that's very often forgotten 
um, when people run a one-way ANOVA test is um, you need homogeneity of variances. Um, there's one test to see whether this is the case, and that's the Bartlett test. Um, so you look at length versus group. You run this test, and ideally what you want to see is a p-value that's higher than 0.05. So in this case, it's 0.8, um, which means that we can assume that the variances of the three groups are equal. So the fourth assumption has been met. Now, if, if all of these assumptions has, have been met, then we can run the actual one-way ANOVA test. So this is the code for the one-way ANOVA test. Uh, LM, it's a linear model, and we look at length of each individual versus the group, so versus the three species, and we define the data set. So we run this, uh, and then we say ANOVA, we call ANOVA for, of this model one, and then at the bottom we get the output of this test, of the one-way ANOVA test. What we see is the F value. You want to report the F value in a paper and also the P value. The P value is much smaller than 0.05, which means that we can reject the null hypothesis. And this indicates that there is a difference in length between the three species. However, we don't know yet which species is longer or smaller than the other one. We don't know. This, this information is not in the one way ANOVA test. So if we want to know which species differ from each other or which is different, we have to run a post hoc test. And one of the post hoc tests that you can do after a one-way ANOVA is a Tucky test. Um, quite simple code. So you define, uh, you just type this code, you run it, and then down below uh, you see comparisons. So what you see here, first line, is that um, the vivid Paris lizard, the length of the vivid Paris lizard is compared to the length of the wall lizard. Second line, we see that the length of the snake-eyed lizard is compared to the length of the wall lizard. And the third line, we see that the length of the snake-eyed lizard is compared to the length of the vivid Paris lizard. Now we want to look at the p-values at the end. Um, if they're smaller than 0.05, then lengths are different. If they're larger than 0.05, the p-values, then lengths are the same. So what we can conclude based on this output from the postdoc test is that this line, we have a p-value that's higher than 0.05, so the snake-eyed lizard and the wall lizard, they're actually the same size. One is not larger or longer than the other. But if you look at the viviparous lizard, we compare it to the wall lizard, then there's a difference, because it's a significant uh, value here. Same for, for this one. Um, snake-eyed lizard and viviparous lizard also significantly different from one another. The differences in themselves are indicated uh, right here. Then next, um, of course, you want to visualize your data as well. Uh, what you can do is you can draw a bar chart. Another, another option, which is always OK, is to just draw a box plot. Um, so for that, we use um, ggplot. So if you haven't installed the packages, you want to install this first, the ggplot2 package. And then you want to call it with the library. Just wait for it to run. Now it's being downloaded, uh, this package. It will be installed. Then I open this library. And then after that, we can run uh, the code to draw a box plot. So we have to wait again. And what we see now, if you look at the box plot at the right, is that we have our three species. Species 1, wall lizard. Species 2, the vivid Paris lizard. Species 3, the snake-eyed lizard. And, uh, like we know already, there is a significant difference in length, but the only difference is that the viviparous lizard is much smaller. Uh, well, not much, but it is a little bit smaller, significantly smaller than the other two species. Whereas wall lizard and snake-eyed lizard, they're pretty much the same size. There's no significant difference. Uh, so this is the one-way ANOVA. It's, it's quite a lot of code if you look at it, uh, because there's quite a lot of assumptions. You should never forget to test your assumptions. It's very important. Um, but you can find all of this code in the link down below. See you later.